Welcome to Germany vs USA and today we're going to talk about microbreweries. Microbreweries is a new trend basically in the United States since the last I guess like 10 years perhaps in the last 10 years. It's blown up in the last 10 years. We've always had microbreweries mm -hmm. but last 10 years it's really blown up uh, and even more so than that last five years it's even gotten bigger so it's a it's a rapidly growing thing. so the american beer is getting better <laughs> we are we're getting they much are, better at making beer so yay to that yay to that and we actually visited a, a microbrewery here in nashville and we talked to ryan a little a little bit and he just tells us some stories about microbreweries so to you ryan check it out So today we're standing here with my buddy Ryan from Craft Brood in Nashville, Tennessee, and he's going to tell us a little bit about microbreweries and what that means. Microbreweries in the United States are quite small operations actually, and they are growing at such a rapid pace that um, people are really starting to catch on. Um, you know, everybody knows Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, and all that, but when somebody actually takes the time to hand make something in very small batches, there's a lot of love and a lot of labor that goes into that. And right. I think people are starting to catch on to better ingredients, better quality, better flavors. And um, yeah, it may be a dollar more, a six pack, but you get what you pay for sometimes. And I would say in the last, what, five, ten years, I mean, it's really just blown up too. I mean, even it, like two years ago. I, I, exactly. Uh, you're starting to see so many more styles, so many more beers that aren't even made to style. You're starting to see, what is there, over tw there's about 2,600 breweries in America now, which is huge because that's the largest amount since Prohibition. Um, and Prohibition, of course, is when our government decided no more alcohol. None. And yeah. that lasted for actually quite a while. When was that? Uh, it was in the 30s. 30, yeah. And 30s, right? Yes. yes. And there were actually several states that had prohibition still after the federal government let, lifted the law. So and an example of that's Dry County, some mm -hmm. of the southern states on al different alcohol laws. So another thing we want to talk about is the difference in the United States and Germany and the purity laws when it comes to making a beer. So I mean that's something you can definitely expand on. Uh, in Germany, you're only allowed to use water and hops and yeast and grain. Wein heißt Geburtsrecht. That's correct. <laughs> Whereas in America, people are putting grapes in beer, they're putting oak chips in beer, they're throwing anything and everything that is consumable into beer. And so with that comes such a wide variety and such a huge scale of the possibilities that actually could be... Uh, endless. It, it, it's endless, yeah, definitely. Um, I understand the tradition and of course tradition is really good and German styles are amazing when done right. Um, I wish we could get them fresher over here in the United States like I'm sure you can in Germany. That would be awesome. But uh, there, there's just so many differences and that's why I think the craft beer industry is going the way it is because so many people have so many options now that uh, there's something out there for everyone, definitely. Well, I'd like to thank you, Ryan, and especially thank you, Craft Brood, for taking the time today to uh, be with us. And, uh, you know, once again, we're in Nashville, Tennessee, and we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you so, so much, back, for Alex the time. and Jim. Thank you. Awesome information from Ryan at Craft Brood. Uh, you know, I think it was so informative. I mean, y'all don't really have a lot of microbreweries, do you? Or they're probably like 400 years old. I, well, I think it's more like a terminology thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't, like, Mikrobrauereien, you know, if you literally translate the term, we don't have that. We have like Hausbrauereien, we have smaller smaller breweries, but we don't really have like, because a microbrewery in the United States has like certain, I guess, uh, has to uh, has to be has to produce according right, to a yeah. certain amount so, of liters a year. Or, right, a microbrew cannot produce uh, more than six million barrels a year, mm -hmm. and they cannot be owned by another beer company. Uh, more than 24%. Okay. So a so a beer company can have, you know, a 
minor ownership. Yes. But anything over 24%, it's automatically not a micro brew anymore. So just to keep it like independent and small mm. and basically right. let them experiment, I guess. Right. That's really cool. Actually, I was surprised in Germany, um, we have about, I guess, like 600 to 900 breweries that would be considered, I guess, could be considered micro breweries from the amount of beer that they produce. Um, and two thirds of those are actually were founded in the last 25 years, which yeah. I was surprised by. And the other third was like 400 years old. <laughs> but there are quite a few new breweries as well, and uh, I didn't know that. But what's it? What's with it? With the, like, so if they are a microbrew and they don't follow the pure purification laws, right, the, uh, the, the way they're sold, can they be distributed or are they just only sold regionally or um, is there anything, like any catch to because they are not following the, the same criteria? I don't think there's a catch. I don't think that's regulated that much in Germany with, you know, with the microbreweries, but I'm not sure how many of those microbreweries will brew non-according to the Reinheitsgebot in Germany because it's the thing, you know. Germans are really, really crazy about the Reinheitsgebot. They won't often want their beer to be brewed according to that. Right. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, again, it's a uh, very, a lot, many small breweries, but I guess different terminology in Germany. Yeah, I mean, with us, I mean, you, even what Ryan was saying, I mean, you got breweries trying out all types of different flavors, ingredients. Um, I mean, it strawberries, beards, they put everything in there. <laughs> and you, it doesn't always work out. I mean, we've had a few that yeah. you weren't too, you didn't like so much. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm generally, a lot of them are ales, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of ales. Um, I've had a couple of Pilsner that were really good. And it's, it's often like a miss or hit, right? Yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, there's a lot that I really like. And mm -hmm. then some, I mean, you're always grabbing something you've never heard of. And, you know. Yeah, I've had some that, sorry, that tasted terrible in my point of view tasted really horrible um, and then I had a couple that were really good. Alex is also kind of a prude though. <laughs> <laughs> so microbreweries you will probably run into that coming to the states is you know I guess kind of almost a phenomenon that's, that's developing right now. Oh yeah I mean states are catching up the northwest of the United States really dominating the scene right now but you know everyone's catching up and there's a lot of good ones. That's awesome so Good beer developing in the United States. I mean, there has been good beers, but even more are coming out. So we're excited about that. We're nipping at your heels. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> not we're, even getting close. <laughs> no, we're not. We're trying, though. <laughs> Y'all take it easy. Cheers.